Hey guys, it's Dom here from Sounds Fear Magazine. Just had a wonderful chat with Lit, talking about their new music, their recent tour with Bowling for Soup. Uh, it's uh, it's an exciting time to be a Lit fan, so an absolute pleasure to do this. Thank you so much uh, to the guys for their time, and uh, yeah, we'll see you again soon. Check it out. Thank you. Cool. So, guys, it's a pleasure to sit with you just after, well, you know, you've, you've had a few weeks back in the US. Obviously, you came off a, a wicked UK tour uh, where you played some quite unusual spots, including Scarborough, which nobody goes to. <laughs> like, it's not a regular touring spot for, for bands. Like, how was the UK dates? Well, how, what did you enjoy about getting back over? We, dude, we love it over there. I, I'm so bummed that it took us so long. I mean, it was supposed to be like six years, but with the pandemic, it took an additional two years. So it was eight years total. And I actually just talked to AJ and Jeremy the other day and I said, dude, we got to make a decision. Either we need to go over there once a year or we just got to stop going. You know, like we can't be going over there every eight years or every six years. It doesn't make any sense. Like we got to commit. And, and the people over there in England, uh, obviously Wales and Ireland and Scotland that the whole UK as a whole has always been so good to us so and you guys are so hungry for music you know you it's the one spot we can go and just about every song feels like a single I tell everybody that and when I do interviews here in the states oh what's your favorite place to play I'm like dude the UK is always awesome always yeah. and I just yeah. love the history it's funny you met you mentioned Scarsborough I had a friend of mine pick me up and take me to uh the Whitby Abbey, which is just 30 minutes away. Yeah, lovely. Dude, I had the time of my life, man. I just, I love seeing historical stuff like that. We don't, we have some cool spots over here in America, but you guys literally have, you know, history over there, like serious history over there. And I just, I love soaking that up, you know? I really do. So I was able to go out there and we went to the, the, um, the uh, what the hell is it called what am i the whitby harbor yeah and i got fresh fish and all that dude it's such a beautiful area you know that's amazing yeah, about it. that way you so did cool. the uh the biggest time lapse of all time scarborough what? is that where you did the the time lapse in scarborough where you went all the way from the uh the castle all the way to the venue that day uh, there's a castle in Scarsboro and I went up there, uh, just after sound check. I actually just went to go get an ice cream and, and an hour <laughs> later, an hour later, I noticed I was about two miles away from the venue and I was up on a hill and I never did get my ice cream, but I, I FaceTimed my wife from up there and, uh, you could see the bay and everything. Man, oh, what yeah. a special tour that was because you're right. We weren't hitting a lot of the normal markets. Yeah. We, yeah. you know, it was, it was called crowd surf the, the UK. And so we were you know, most of the venues were by the bay, you know, by the mm -hmm. ocean and stuff. So that was really special to be able to do something like that. You know, it was, it was a first time thing for Bowling for Soup and they go over there a lot more than we do. So to kind of tag along with those guys and be able to do that was really cool. And dude, the, their crowds were awesome for us. And when we'd be on stage, we, you could see the pockets of lit fans everywhere. It was really <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, Taylor, a couple of memories from you as well, like like your thoughts of being in in these unusual spaces, even in unusual places. Yeah, man. I, I particularly remember Scarborough. I remember getting up and seeing the sea right there. I was like, "Whoa, wow, this is a cool little sea town." And I saw how many different you know types of fish and chips places were there so yeah. immediately that's where we went with our boys and um <clears throat> it was just a great place to explore and that show in particular was a really fun one because i remember how insane that venue was yeah you remember that venue kevin mm -hmm. that was a fun one and then that show was electric man people were so excited and yeah yeah, you, you get that excitement over there, which I really love. And you, yeah. you get that here too, obviously, but over there it's just a little bit different because I think we're spoiled over here. We get so much good music and, and over there they have to wait a little bit longer because the bands are a little bit more spread out. Mm. I, I don't yeah. know, I can't, but that's what it felt like to me. But it was yeah. such a blast, man. No, nah, it's yeah. interesting. It's interesting, you know, um, Ke Kevin, like you were saying, like ba bands don't always make, you know, don't always get to go to, you know, Scarborough to go to, Whit you know, to visit Whitby. And uh, it's a lovely experience. Uh, it but, is. But again, it's not, it's not in everybody's market. You mentioned, you know, it's not the, the sort of key markets for bands. So right. It's a, it's, a, it's a great experience for people. Dude, I've been over to England so many times. I still haven't been to Stonehenge. I, <laughs> I can't believe I haven't been there. And now I hear it's all fenced off and everything. So yes. oh, it is? I, 
I, yeah, I, well, you can still go visit it, but I think you have to pay. Whereas, you know, 20 yeah. years ago, you could actually drive right up to it and take some pictures with it and drive off. But, you know, I think they got to protect it now. So it's, it's just a little bit more of a yeah. protected landmark. You mentioned Scarsboro earlier. Uh, I did a little research when I was there. I wish I'd have done a little bit more research before I left. Um, but when you go there and, and they have posters in the venue of past shows, they had a poster there from like 1963, I think, of the Beatles playing there. Yeah. And so I started digging around a little bit. I'm um, Blackpool was one of our very first shows. And Blackpool, the particular venue is where the Stones played in 60 three or 64 yeah. and they got banned and they weren't allowed to go they were not allowed to play in blackpool for i didn't even know years. that i didn't even yeah. know that. there you go there wow. was a riot at the venue that we played at um uh, and then after the 40 year time lapse they actually played i don't know if they played that venue again i mean they were the stones yeah. so but yeah. they played blackpool again you know yeah is, so is I, it I, I love stuff like that the empress ballroom is that the, the place the, yeah the empress yeah. ballroom yeah yeah oh there was a riot there huh yeah, back in like 64. But uh, and then you can go online and see photos of them playing there and you can actually see the arches in the background. And yeah. dude, I just love stuff like that. Like to think that the Stones, you know, and the yeah. Beatles, yeah. to me, arguably two of the biggest bands ever. Of course. Um, you know, playing those same stages, playing those same that same space is really cool. Uh, yeah. It's a beautiful, beautiful memory as well. And I'm so glad I saw some clips. I, it was so, so cool that you uh, you were able to do it. And I think that moves on nicely to my next question, because you've been able to do so much over your careers, obviously individual different times in the band, but um, success is a different question to different people. It means different things to different musicians, you know, based on, you know, career highs, career lows. So for both of you individually, because I know you can't speak for the rest of the band, what does success mean to you both? Well, for me personally, the fact that I still get to walk out the door with some luggage and go play shows, you know, um, dude, I mean, that, I mean, I'm not rich by any means, but the fact that I still pay, you know, I can keep the lights on and yeah. put food in the refrigerator. And uh, to me, that's successful, you know, and um, yeah. I've got friends that work their butts off and have really awesome jobs. And their jaw drops when I tell them that I'm going to, where are you going? I'm going to the UK for two weeks. They're like, what? Yeah. And I've got friends that have never, I have friends that have never been out of California. I've got fr tons of friends that have never been out of the U S they've only been to a couple States. I've literally played every state in the U S I've played so many countries. I can't even count. And uh, the fact that I still get to do that to me, that's living, going to see things, meeting new people, to me, that's success, you know? Mm. It's not how much necessarily how much money you have in the bank. I mean, having money and being comfortable is obviously very important and, and, yeah. and it's nice, but you know, we it's it's music, it's art, you know? And so it's always a struggle as a lot of people know that are in the business. It's, it's mm. a struggle, you know? It's like photography and painting and writing songs and putting out albums. And it's, it's, it's a tough business. It's fun, it looks like a lot of fun, but it's a tough business. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, yeah, for me, I, um, for years, I, I was kind of down on myself. I was like, dude, why don't I have $3 million yet? You know, whatever. I'm 35 years old. And, you know, I, I finally discovered recently, I'm like, that's probably not going to happen. Uh, and if it does, big deal, because I, at least I get to make my own schedule and wake up when I want. And mine's very similar to Kevin, my answer, because, yeah, dude, I get to keep a roof over my head with music that's insane that's like walking a tightrope and i feel very blessed that we get to do this you know yeah. and when we were in the uk just cruising down the road on that double decker bus that we couldn't stand up all the way on i was thinking to myself i'm really blessed to be on this thing you know yeah it's nice. really cool to go show to show and meet new people and make money doing that that's weird yeah yeah, it's an amazing, amazing journey. And I guess that, you know, again, you know, going from that then, because both of you have had different journeys as musicians. You both, uh, again, had, you know, different different experiences. So for you both individually, from the beginning of your career, from where you first started, before any of the, you know, before any of this kicked off, the worldwide tours, whatever, how have you changed and developed as musicians? And then we're going to do as people, but, but first off as musicians, how have you changed and developed as people? What have you learned about yourselves? You know, I never had any proper lessons. It's funny. My son is in piano lessons and he's in, you know, he's taking bass lessons 
it sounds funny because I'm a bass player. Uh, <laughs> I work with I work with him at home, but I, sometimes he doesn't always listen to dad. And all it takes is somebody different that he doesn't know, you know, as well as he knows me for him to pay attention and really listen to to another side of things. So I can't read music. I learn everything by ear. Wow. Um, and I've just learned over the years, kind of follow my instinct and not to try and overplay anything. Don't try to be something I'm not. Yeah. Uh, I'm not Jaco Pastorius on bass by any means. Um, oh, yes. I know, you know, vocals are very important. So I bring that to the table as well. Um, and, you know, and Lit, with a band like Lit, entertainment is a big part of it too. So it, I've, I've equated me being on stage to being like being a tennis player. I'm kind of like a tennis player, but I'm playing bass and I'm singing and I'm, I'm doing all this. So almost being on stage is like a workout for me. And I, I love that. But um, yeah, you know, I, I've, you know, in my later years, I've kind of gotten pretty comfortable in my shoes and, and who I am as a bass player. Um, and even a songwriter, you know, I, I got, I got some cool stuff to offer there too. So, yeah. 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 As a drummer, I, I stepped off the road for about seven years Yeah, in my twenties. Cause I just got burned out by it for some reason. I just didn't feel like carrying around drums anymore. <laughs> but um, as soon as I got the opportunity to play for these guys and when I started joining up with them and becoming part of this family, it actually, helped me get more chops up with listening to all the other musicians that are on stage with me and playing more for the song as opposed to just doing a long hour and a half drum solo every night you know yeah. so that's kind of what's changed me is just really making the song you know my own and that having that be the most important element while we're playing is just playing to the song yeah yeah, so I'll, was, I'll, yeah, I'll add to Taylor's, you know, he's, he, um, I didn't know Taylor. We, we got into a bit of a bind with our last drummer mm. and he, he fell ill. And, and, um, so, and we had two shows and, and our old drummer wanted to cancel the shows. And then Jeremy and AJ mentioned Taylor. I said, well, that's, it's the only shot we have. Let's give him a try. So we did a rehearsal with Taylor and I think we went over probably 16 songs and when we were done, which was like 24 hour notice uh, and he played them just about perfectly. And then he said, what else do you guys want to play? And he, I think he knew more songs than us. <laughs> He's kind of a freak of nature. And uh, he, you know, he absolutely killed it on those first two shows granted like 24 hours uh, notice. And, uh, and he's been with us ever since, but, it's weird, man. You put a drummer like Taylor behind you and it adds a different energy to the, to the, the songs, both old and new. Yeah. Um, it, it, you really feel that support back there. The drummer really does kind of carry the show. I look back at him and he knows what I'm talking about. I'll look back at him and I'll just say what, like, I'll just mouth what the fuck, you know? And, and that's a good thing because yeah. he'll add a fill that I've never heard before, <laughs> you know, and some nights he'll add it and some nights he doesn't. And, and it's just, but it feels good having that there. He, he, it's like having the best weapon in the war. You know, you got one of the best weapons, and he really, oh, he, thanks, he really does do a, a great job. And um, it, it's Beautiful. really, you know, I hear more. Like Taylor said, he he bailed the drums for a while because I mean, with as a drummer, especially when you're kind of slugging it out in the clubs and all that, you're, it's a lot of equipment, you know, stands and all that crap. So I I can tell that you know he got burned out or whatever, but. He really is. He's a, he's a freak of nature. I'm so glad that he came out of drumming retirement to uh, play for. <laughs> yeah. Man. Oh, thanks, Kevin. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like to throw you off the train tracks for a second and then bring us right back. I like <laughs> I like the hands and the looks from you guys, and then as soon yeah. as I get this, I throw us right back on the track. Nice, Sorry, nice, no nice. All good, man. So I mean, I mean that that's the thing, you know. I think you know it's so cool that you've got that camaraderie there yeah. and that 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 good vibe and i think that's that you know it's a testament to you guys as a band and i, and I think you know similar to the line of questioning for the next one it, you know because again being in a touring band can change you as people being in a band like lit with legacy and we'll talk about legacy before the end but you know it can change you and, it, and it, you know it, it can develop you so how have you changed as people in your in your careers like how you know from the big from what have you learned from 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 the very beginning of your time as a musician to now, how have you changed as people? Well, 
for me, you know, it's no secret that Lit has a, uh, a history with drinking, you know? Our yeah. biggest song is about asking kind of for forgiveness because you drank so much and you don't know what happened. And that was a reoccurring story. I mean, we could have wrote that song 20, 20 times over, really. Yeah. Um, in, I think it was 2016, I, uh, I finally made the decision I quit drinking. I had to, um, I had a wife, I have a, you know, I have a wife and I, mm. I have a son and I just, I had to pick one or the other, you know, and yeah. for me personally, that was the better decision. And I, um, but now I go on trips, like I just said to, to, uh, the UK and I really take the time to, to walk around and, and really soak in the local sites, the local architecture and it, it, as cheesy as that might sound, but as you get older, I think that kind of stuff is important, man. You, I, if you can do it when you're younger, it's even more important. Yeah. Um, it's easy to get drunk and be hung over all day and drag your ass out of bed. I mean, I did, I did that for a long time. I kind of felt like I already did all that. Let's try this now. Let's try like a sober life. And I, and I absolutely love it to be honest with you, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. I don't get all tore up anymore. Um, and then I feel like I've grown quite a bit, you know, personally in all areas, you know, I'm, I'm a lot more mature. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I'm a lot more mature, you know? Mm. Um, so that, that's, that's me in a nutshell. Uh, yeah. I respect where you've been, man. Being able to reflect on, you know, maybe being able to quit drinking and stuff that takes some balls, you know? Yeah. You thanks know, man. This is, I, re I respect that a lot. What about yourself, Taylor? How have you, how have you kind of changed the person through? Cause you mean, you mentioned like quitting drums and then coming back. That must have been, yeah. you know, even though it was a lovely offer, you know, touring around the world in lip must have been very attractive. Yeah. But, you know, what's, how have you changed? Yeah, when I was younger, I, I was in a pretty successful group for what it was and got to tour around the world quite a bit and did a lot of stuff. And then because of certain things that I saw within that band and mm. just things in the business that were changing and it was becoming all the Internet is like around 2008 this is like right you know before instagram and all that yeah that's when i started seeing the writing on the wall i'm like man i'm out but this time around now that i'm touring again as a drummer i think this is one of the only bands that could ever get me to do that honestly because i've actually always been a fan of the music itself and that kind of touches on why i knew all those songs you know at rehearsal Mm -hmm. I actually enjoy the journey more now touring with these guys than I ever did with the other bands. I just kind of took all that for granted, but now I kind of, I'm stoked wherever we go. I, I kind of, Kevin and I are kind of exploring buddies. Sometimes we'll, I'll go to record shops with him and you know, wherever he goes, but sometimes I do stay up late and I can't stop watching TV and then I'll have to sleep in a little bit. And then I get mad at myself and I'm like, dude, what are we doing? And he's like, dude, I've been up since six. And I'm like, what? But um, I'm trying to get better at that, waking up earlier on the road, but it's so hard to do sometimes for a 35 year old going on 18, you know, but um, <laughs> I actually enjoy the journey a lot more now than I ever have. Yeah. So I, I'd say that's how I change a little bit is realizing that this could end very soon uh, or it could be from, you know, an, another pandemic or something, God forbid, you know, because yeah. that was really hard for everybody too. But, yeah. you know, that that is what keeps me excited that we're actually out there doing it even when we get on a plane i'm like awesome we're going somewhere i have yeah. no idea where we're going yeah no it's it's it's, it's, it's amazing I <laughs> it's, it's great again great to hear about those experiences man like again you know traveling around the world and everything um three or four more questions now then one of the things before we talk about some of the new material you guys are bringing out uh part of my day job is working with young people and they look at bands like yourselves uh and and, and again the legacy of bands like lip with all you know the, the millions of streams and and the, the you know the glamorous shows and everything and they think oh, i'm never gonna you know I, I'm, I'm never gonna be able to do that i'm never you know i'm never i'm gonna i'm gonna really struggle with that and i, I wanted to get both of your kind of inputs on some of the realities of the music industry you mentioned some taylor as well um mm -hmm. some of the realities of the music industry that you wish you'd have known like when you started out that you know now some of the experiences that you've kind of been through that you would tell somebody you know to to, to be aware of um you know when they're trying to start their career and they're looking at bands like yourselves and the streams and they're kind of beating themselves up because they're not you know they don't think they're going to ever get to say where you guys are at you know yeah 
Um, man, I wish I had a great answer on today's music and how to and how to make it. It just seems like uh, from when I was younger to where we are now, things the turnover is so much quicker. You know, here today, gone later today. Whereas back in the day when I was younger, it seems like bands could put out a number of albums, five, six albums. And, and that was a good foundation for their fan base to really sink their teeth into. And then they would start releasing albums a little bit, you know, further apart, whatever. And I, with today's, I mean, we don't have, um, dude, radio seems like it's kind of going away a little mm. bit, you know, mm. you, and, and we, when I was growing up, you had MTV. So there was, there was goals, you know, like if I could just get on radio, if I could just get a record deal, and if I could get on MTV, if I can get those three, three things to align, then I would have success. And I, I want to say that Lit was one of the last kind of, we were last, the last of the, the parade there to get mm -hmm. those three things. And we were on MTV, we got the record deal and the radio stations and all that. But I don't know, what is the goal today? What do kids strive for? You know, they try and get big on TikTok now, which is great. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not dissing it at all. It's just, I think that's the new thing. Like be big on social media and that is kind of your MTV and that is kind of your radio station. But another thing to, to think about is when I was growing up, there was, for example, there was a hundred bands. Now it seems like there's 20,000 bands yeah. you're competing with, if not more. Yeah. You know, festivals come through um, California, whatever, and I see an ad, most of the bands I've never even heard of. And I'm like, how, who are these bands? I've never even heard of them. Um, there are just so many bands. There's so much competition for that golden ring, you know? Um, but if you think you've got it, then go for it, you know? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I, I don't know. It's a, it's a weird, yeah, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Taylor, your thoughts on that? <laughs> put, you, put you on the spot yeah. haven't i <laughs> yeah you're talking to a guy that went for it when he was younger right, as a yeah. artist and all this other shit and uh didn't happen uh and nowadays i i don't it's not that i will never try again or it's, it's, it's nothing like that but i i have no idea uh, same as kevin i th there's a million bands out there and so many of them are great and then you know, I think it's all about social media, obviously. I don't know what the key ingredient to that is. I have no idea. I'm not very good at that kind of stuff. I'm always trying to learn. And as a band, we're learning how to do that right now. With social media. Like we're having fun with our TikToks and stuff like that. But yeah, it's hard to know how to gauge where it's all going. Yeah, what is the goal? Is it an incredible song? Yeah. Okay, that song was heard. Next week, you have to put out another three singles at once i mean it's it's so fast now i think what is is just creating over and over again as quick as you can yeah. like it's like a speed race and it's hard to keep up with but as a songwriter and you know producer and all the other things i do i always try to just create 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 and i think that's the right thing i don't know yeah but it seems to work sometimes i yeah I don't think anybody has the answer because nobody saw where all this was going. And I think it's probably going to still go more places because now we got the metaverse coming out and NFTs and I have no idea <laughs> yeah. where it's going to land. And it's kind of exciting and kind of really frightening. So I have no idea. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, when, I was, go on. <clears throat> when I was growing up, uh, I wanted to be on stage first and foremost. I wanted to know what that was like. And I mm -hmm. wanted to play an instrument and I wanted to be with a team of like-minded guys and that's all I wanted. But what I didn't realize is that you, you got to almost kind of be an actor because you're going to have to now do videos and you're, and, yeah. and then further, further than that, you're going to have to do TikToks and do all this kind of stuff. Not that you have to be an actor, but it, it's just answer. another element, you know, and then, and then you photos are very important. There are, there are so many aspects to being in a band. It's not just hey, you better be a good songwriter, you know, um, it, it doesn't stop there. It just, yeah, you wear a lot of hats being in a band, a lot of hats. Yeah, yeah. So. It sounds like you're both still learning, which is which is fascinating. Yeah. It? You feel like, you know, you might know everything having been through what you've been through, but, but here yeah. you are still learning how to be, you know, how to do it. It's yeah. fascinating. 
<laughs> yeah, fascinating. A um, few more questions then, just uh, two or three more. Um, uh, before we talk about the new material, um, I, I do want to ask you guys about legacy. I have used the word before, uh, you know, during this interview. Do you guys pay much attention to it? You know, because I, I know young people, kids now that like still listen to A Place in the Sun, they're still jamming out to Almost Enemy, that, you know, and they go back to those records, you know, that, that sometimes their, their parents were listening to and, and they love it. And, you know, some of them were at your shows. Um, but do you do, does the legacy of lit matter to you both as individuals? Do you pay much attention to that? Does it matter, or, or how how do you feel about the, the sort of where legacy as a band who has such a back catalogue that means so much to so many people? I I personally think it's a it's a huge part, and we're so fortunate to have that. I mean, in this day and age, especially, you need whatever you whatever fuel you can put in the tank to keep people interested, to keep people coming to the shows, to keep people, you know, all things lit, you know, whatever it's gonna take. So we're, we're so fortunate to have written an album and released an album like A Place in the Sun <clears throat> that still rings, you know, to the core of our fan base. And, and like you said, there's people out there that, not just My Own Worst Enemy, but there's yeah. Perfect One and different songs on the album that do people have played our songs at funerals, at weddings, at graduations, at birthday parties, you know, you name it, the song has been celebrated all over the place. And as you get older, you really, really embrace hearing those stories because it really shows you that you did something that mattered and it really reached across the lines and it really did something for somebody, you know? And music, both for Taylor and myself and the rest of the guys in the band and people around the world, music touches you. That's why you do interviews with musicians and it's why I am a musician. Yeah. Music touched you, it touches me, it does something for it, it moves us. Mm. And there's so much different kind of music and I'm not saying one music's better than any other music. If it moves you, then it's great, man, that, that's yeah. cool. Because yeah. at the end of the day, life is short and you should enjoy it. And music is a piece of that puzzle of, of enjoying life, you know? And, and so the fact that we re released some music that people love, then great, man, absolutely. I love yeah. it. I embrace it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Taylor, you're, cause obviously you're going to have a different relationship with lit cause you're, you know, you've, you've, well, uh, you know, you've been a part of the band for less time, but yeah. again, legacy, legacy of lit. And I guess legacy as a drummer, like, do you pay much attention to legacy as a musician as well? I mean, I'm more about keeping the legacy and this is a truthful answer. I'm, yeah. uh, you know, it sounds like bullshit, but it's not, I'm, I'm concerned always about keeping the legacy alive for the band. Yeah. I was the kid always listening to miserable Sam Goody when I was yeah. little parents were like, let's go. And I'm at the mall and I grew up listening to these guys. So now that I'm a full blown member and that I'm like part of this team, I'm always trying to better myself, how I play these songs, especially the original and not stray too far away from, you know, what big Al's parts were, you know, the original drummer and mm. to always try to pay homage to, who these guys are and what they do and but then to also fit myself in there too as if yeah. it's like you know i've i've been accepted years ago by them kind of thing if we could go back in time you know and and that you know if big al is looking down on us that he's stoked that i'm in this band you know kind of thing and and so i'm always trying to keep that respectful vibe alive because they may not be able to see the forest in the trees like yeah. i can't as an ex fan it's not that I'm not a fan anymore, Kevin, <laughs> but like, uh, I, I, I'm still a fan of this, these songs that we play, but now as like a member of this whole thing, I try to keep that vibe alive, how, you know, Big Al did, but then mm. add my own flavor without trying to run anything over and change anything and reinvent the wheel. Yeah. So, yeah. That being said, there's definitely a legacy to be kept alive. Lit is a very original different thing I, I've never seen another band that are like them in the way that they're kind of everything you know they got the they got the riffs they got the crazy tones and they have mm -hmm. style and I can never keep up with their style these guys are always pulling out hangers and wardrobe cases and they always have new jackets and coats and cool shirts and I'm always just kind of hanging on and taking lessons of uh, wherever they got their fashion it's kind of rad to be a part of it yeah, man, I, I saw some pretty, pretty cool jackets on the tour, for sure. Yeah, some good stuff. 
Thanks, um, yeah, um, cool. I mean, so so again, um, just to squeeze in uh, one in before we do message for, for UK fans. Obviously, you have a new record coming out, uh, Tastes Like Gold, and the singles on there. You know, I, I was listening to, obviously, my research for the chat, you know, kind of going back to my sort of teenage years and going back over the back catalogue, but also Mouth Shut, yeah, 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 and those singles. For you guys, um, what to, to what extent, you know, are those tracks a, a great representation of what you're trying to do with the band now with Taste Like Gold and the future of Lit? Because we've talked a lot about the past, but there's a, there's a big future for you guys and, and some banging singles as well. I had a fantastic time showing it to, to, to friends and people around me and listening to those new tracks. So uh, can you tell me th- about the singles and, and what they mean to you in the context of the new record and, and the future of Lit? I think I think these songs. I am so proud of this new album, <clears throat> and I've told I've told a, a couple of friends this, and now I've said it in a couple of interviews. But I would almost put "Taste Like Gold" up against "A Place in the Sun." I love "A Place in the Sun," but that being like the holy grail of lit albums, I think this album has so much to offer, and I feel like it's a great representation of what lit is in 2022 i think it it rings true to what we began and where we're at now it's still kind of the same music it fits really well with the older music um it's banging it's catchy yeah, it's 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 dirty it's party it's it's everything you know kicked off the plane is a true story that just happened you know not that long ago that's a true story uh a couple of couple of our guys and a crew guy got kicked off a plane which not necessarily proud about, but again, it goes back to this band has a little bit of a drinking problem and I'm not really proud of that either, but it is what we are, you know, and mm-hmm. it, we, we, we tend to write about that kind of topic. Yeah. And so kick off the plane kind of touches on that a little bit mouth shut kind of a, it can go anyway. It can be a political thing because sometimes politically you shouldn't talk politics with friends or your family. Um, keep your mouth shut with your girlfriend or your boyfriend. I, I should tell them, but I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to keep them. It can literally be anything, you know, you know, if you, if you open your mouth, it can get really dirty. Do you want to do that? Well, I don't know, but you know, and there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of great songs on this album. The weird thing is there's probably two songs on the album that I'm not even sure if they're going to be singles that are probably my favorite songs on the album. So I really hope people give it a, give it a shot, you know, and listen to it because if you've never really heard of lit before, I think it, it holds up with today's music, no problem. Yeah. But it also, if you're an, a longtime lit fan, it holds up to old school lit as well. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so absolutely. I'm the guy, I'm the guy in the band that keeps pushing to want to play new music live. Yeah. And they're all, well, we got to play these, you know, six <laughs> songs. We have to, I'm all, well, let's cut one. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, Taylor, your relationship with these songs as well. Yeah. I, it, it definitely is lit. I mean, it's, it's not, you know, it's not country. It's not anything far away from lit. Not that you know, that is, but uh, it sounds like old school lit. And that's what I like. And it's got some new elements in it. So I think the lit fans are really going to appreciate this album big yeah. time. Yeah. It's an ex- time. exciting time for, for you guys as a band. And I guess that, yeah, um, to finish off, obviously you, you did just get back to the UK, Bowling for Super, part of that tour. You know, when can we expect you back? No pressure, but but like, are you coming back? Are you coming back to the seaside towns that nobody goes to on tour? What, 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 uh, when can we expect you back and what have you got coming up? God, I hope so. When are we coming back, Kevin? <laughs> well, I know, it's, I know it's something we're going to talk about. Like I told you from the top of the interview, it's like we either got to go there or not go there at all because mm-hmm. – in order for a fan to sink their teeth into you that you gotta you gotta give them something you know Mm. you can't just come back every six to eight years and hope that you're gonna have a fan base because you gotta feed them you know and and that's what i want to do and i love it over there i love the area i love the fans over there i love their love for music and you guys got a, a ton of amazing festivals over there i'd really like to start going over there and nurturing that a little bit more so mm-hmm. it's definitely going to be a topic of discussion as getting back over there and, and how we're going to do that, you know, mm. um, maybe teaming up. There's plenty of people to team up with. So maybe yeah. we team up with somebody and get over there. Uh, exactly. yeah, we, we, we were supposed to play download in yeah. 2020 and 
I was so bummed that none of us got to do that. I mean, for obvious reasons, but yeah, I'd love to finally get back there and play that and, you know, go explore some more cities that I haven't seen in, in the UK because yeah. there's so many spots there that these guys have seen and I haven't. I've only been there a few times, but I just, I'd love to go back and play some more tours there soon. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, again, you've seen some good spots so far, man. I'm sure it's, uh, again, the first of many, many times over here. Fingers crossed. Um, obviously, the new record is coming out. Anything else you'd like to plug before we finish? Any other projects? Anywhere you want to send people uh, before we end? Well, just check us out on all of our social media outlets. And we're on TikTok. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. Uh, what else are we on? We should be on Twitch, Kevin. We should play video games in front of fans. <laughs> talk about that later. I'm not sure that's going to happen, but yeah, June 17th is the album release party. We are doing a, a hometown um, show in Orange County, California for uh, the album release. And um, for the rest of the year, we've got a bunch of stuff and we're, we're planning on a U.S. tour October, November. And um, yeah, and hopefully we get back over there sooner rather than later. I don't, I want to get over there like in the next, within the next year, at least we got to get back over there. Yeah, we're, we're, we're excited to have you, man. I can't wait to, to come and c- come and see you guys play. Well, thank you so much for making the time for me so early on in your day. I you got appreciate it, man. it. And uh, I'm sure we'll catch you, catch you next time you're over as well. Cool, yeah, man. man. Thanks for having us.